At the bottom of the stairs, the rat Botticelli sat waiting. And when Despero stepped from the last stair onto the dungeon floor, Botticelli called out to him as if he were a long lost friend. Ah, said Botticelli, there you are, exactly. I've been waiting for you. Despero saw the dark shape of a rat, that thing that he had feared and dreaded for so long, finally step out of the gloom and come to greet him. Welcome, welcome, said Botticelli. Despero put his paw on the needle. Ah, said Botticelli, you are armed. How charming. He put his paws up in the air. I surrender. Oh, yes, certainly. Ah, exactly. I surrender. I, said Despero. Yes, said Botticelli, you. He took the locket from around his neck. He began to swing it back and forth. Please, go on. I don't want to hurt you, said Despero. I just need to get by you. I, I am on a quest. Really, said Botticelli. How extraordinary. A mouse on a quest. Back and forth. Back and forth went the locket. A quest for what? A quest to save the princess. The princess, said Botticelli. The princess, the princess. Everything seems to be about the princess these days. The king's men were down here searching for her, you know. They didn't find her. That goes without saying. But now a mouse has arrived, and he is on a quest to save the princess. Yes, said Despero. He took a step to the left of Botticelli. How inspiring, said Botticelli. He lazily took a step to his right, blocking Despero's way. Why the hurry, little friend? Because, said Despero, I have to. Yes. Yes, you have to save the princess, exactly. But before you save her, you must find her, correct? Yes, said Botticelli. What if, said Botticelli, what if I told you that I know exactly where the princess is? What if I told you that I could take you right directly to her? Um said Despero. His voice shook. His paws on the needle trembled. Why would you do that? Why would I do that? Why would I help you? Why? To be of service. To do my part for humanity. To aid in the saving of a princess. But you are a, a rat, supplied Botticelli. Yes, I am a rat. And I see by your trem, trem, trembling that the greatly exaggerated rumors of our evil nature have reached your oversized ears. Yes, said Despero. If, said Botticelli, swinging the locket back and forth, if you allow me to be of assistance, you will be doing me a tremendous favor. Not only can I do a good deed for you and for the princess, but my actions will help to dispel this terrible myth of evil that seems to surround rats everywhere. Will you let me assist you? Will you let me assist myself and my kind? Reader, was it a trick? Of course it was. Botticelli did not want to be of service. Far from it. You know what Botticelli wanted. He wanted others to suffer. Specifically, he wanted this small mouse to suffer. How best to do that? Why, take him right directly to what he wanted, the princess. Let him see what his heart desired. And then, and only then, faced with what he loved, would Despero die. And at the end of it all, how tasty the mouse would be, seasoned with hope and tears and flour and oil and thwarted love. 
My name, little friend, is Botticelli Ramoso. And you may trust me. You must trust me. Will you tell me your name? Despero. Despero Tilling. Despero Tilling. Take your paw from your weapon. Come with me. Despero stared at him. Come, come, said Botticelli. Let go of your needle. Take hold of my tail. I will lead you to your princess. I promise. What, reader, in your experience is the promise of a rat worth? That's right. Zero. Zip. Nada. Goose eggs. But I must ask you this question, too. What else was there for Despero to hold on to? You are right again. Nothing. And so the mouse reached out. He took hold of the rat's tail. Chapter 48 on the tail of a rat. Have you ever had hold of the tail of a rat? At best, it is an unpleasant sensation, scaly and cold, similar to holding on to a small, narrow snake. At worst, when you are dependent upon a rat for your survival, and when a part of you is certain that you are being led nowhere except to your death, it is a hideous sensation indeed to have nothing but a rat's tail to cling to. Nonetheless, Despero held on to Botticelli Remorso, and the rat led him deeper and deeper into the dungeon. Despero's eyes had, by this point, adjusted quite well to the darkness, though it would have been better if they had not, for the things he saw made him shiver and shake. What did he see? He saw that the floor of the dungeon was littered with tufts of fur, knots of red thread, and the skeletons of mice. Everywhere there were tiny white bones glowing in the darkness, and he saw in the dungeon tunnels through which Botticelli led him. The bones of human beings, too, grinning skulls and delicate finger bones, rising up out of the darkness and pointing toward some truth best left unspoken. Despero closed his eyes, but it didn't help. He saw as if his eyes were still open wide, the bones, the tufts of hair, the knots of thread, the despair. Ha ha! Exactly, Botticelli laughed as he negotiated the twist and turns. Oh, yes, exactly. If what was in front of Despero was too horrible to contemplate, what followed behind him was perhaps even worse. Rats, a happy, hungry, vengeful parade of rats, their noses up in the air, sniffing, sniffing. Mouse, sang out one rat joyfully. Yes, oh yes, mouse, agreed another, but something else too. Soup, called out another rat. Yeah, soup, the others agreed. Blood, sang a rat. Blood, they all agreed together. And then they sang, here, mousey, 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 here, little mousey. Botticelli called out to the other rats. Mine, he said. This little treasure is all mine, ladies and gentlemen. Please, I beg you, do not infringe on my discovery. Mr. Amorso, said Despero, he turned and looked behind him and saw the rats, their red eyes, and their smiling mouths. He closed his eyes again. He kept them closed. Mr. Amorso, he shouted. Yes said Botticelli. Mr. Amorso, said Despero, and he was crying now. He couldn't help it. Please, the princess. Tears, shouted the rats. We smell tears, Mousy, we do. Please, shouted Despero. Little friend, said Botticelli. Little Despero Tilling, I promised you, and I will keep that promise. The rat stopped. Look ahead of you, he said. What do you see? Despero opened his eyes. Light, he said. Exactly, said Botticelli. 
light. We'll stop there for today. So, what is Botticelli's plan? Take him deeper into the dungeon and then leave him there, maybe? We'll find out. <laughs>